The Stephen King boom started in the 80s and, in my opinion, peaked in the 90s, in terms of output. With the smart move to adapt stories in the TV miniseries fashion, it opened up his world to an entire new audience, while the film side was running full steam ahead. And though I'd argue we are in the middle of a King renaissance, a second wave if you will, there was a certain naive charm to what I'd refer to as the everything but the kitchen sink approach to his adaptations during this time. Between film and television, almost everything and anything became an adaptation. And though his work wasn't as refined as it is now, we got some of the most inventive and wild swings during the 90s. It may not be the best in terms of quality and execution as a whole, but it was by far the most interesting. We got wild ones like Sleepwalkers and Pet Cemetery 2, while hitting cinematic gold with the misery in the Green Mile. And you know, let's not forget it gave us the greatest movie of all time. That's goddamn right. On today's episode of The Black Sheep, I'm aiming my sights on one of the most dog-piled king entries out there. One that is so hated and made fun of, you'd think this video would be career suicide. I'm defending one I've always liked, one that fits into that bizarrely enjoyable category, 1995's The Mangler. I want to thank you guys for watching The Black Sheep and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now. Like this video and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now back to the show. Based on a quick 20 page short story from King's Night Shift collection, The Mangler tells the simple tale of a corrupt small main town that houses a haunted industrial laundry press machine. Now, here's how I would sell it. It's a silly Stephen King story that takes the ridiculous premise, plays it razor straight to the point of fascination, yet fills it with bigger than life characters, a slightly gothic aesthetic, and gore that would fit nicely alongside the equally strange flicks like Basket Case and The Burning. Night Shift has 20 short stories and The Mangler is one of the simpler ones. It's a story that in written form is just as dumb sounding as the plot of the movie adaptation. A synopsis that is more of an exercise in, uh... Ooh, what if? Pressure drop, ooh, pressure, yeah. Than a true need to tell the most frightening tale. Basically, The Mangler is and will always be a ludicrous premise. I mean, haunted laundry press is what we get here. No twist or turns, it is a haunted laundry press from the opening scene and god do i love that the 90s were so damn angsty did i tell you i'm right because if this somehow got greenlit today half the runtime we spent winking at the audience and be stuffed full of dialogue mentions and how ridiculous the whole situation is but the 90s were a special if not somewhat misguided time where the mangler got the same treatment as pet cemetery our hero and main character is the grizzled and too old for this shit Officer John Hunton, played flawlessly by the always great Ted Levine. Hunton is written here as a man on the edge, a man who has lost his wife and is barely hanging on. Yes, this haunted laundry machine story has a hard-boiled detective character that has the same attitude as one who's two days away from retirement and just can't. Do it anymore. Shut up, goddammit. Don't start with the sprout breath political mystical bullshit, Mark. Go on, threaten me. I'll shove them crutches up your moldy ass, you fucking clown. This is bullshit, Mark. Get the fuck out of this town before I turn completely numb. It's this heavy dramatic angle that the mangler follows throughout. It sells the machine as the embodiment of evil. And yeah, it's not even close to being scary, but the movie does its damnedest to invest in its danger and is why. This is such a joyous experience. Miserable and depressed cop, check. A kind occultist friend who believes in ancient evil, check. Wicked owner who looks like a comic book villain, check. Intense gore, again, check. 
And the mangler never once laughs or winks at itself. Now, should it? Many would argue yes. But to me, it's always been far more interesting of a challenge to do what was done here. Silly premise aside. And even when the damn thing comes alive, the threat is at 11 the entire time. And again, I'm not saying this nailed the scary elements, but more that I'm impressed at the effort made here to try and make this whole thing gel. What the fuck was that? Jesus Christ. From the first gruesome death to the batshit crazy ending chase, director Toby Hooper takes things super serious while finding a clever way of developing the world in a slightly embellished way. The world here is grounded and presented as real, but there are many choices that exaggerate it as well. The Blue Ribbon Laundry Warehouse is so Vincent Price level haunted looking that it's a character in itself. The Mangler has such a specific steampunk look that is believable enough yet looks like something out of a comic book. The warehouse looks like it was condemned at the turn of the century and is stylized with an almost Tim Burton Batman design. And not to mention every night scene is covered in that aggressive 80s fog. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I don't care. It's clearly the 90s. Yeah, there are these odd choices that make it sort of uh, alternate dimension kind of timeless. The police have these kind of weird old fashioned uniforms. The town's crime scene photographer is straight out of Dick Tracy with his bulb popping camera and has the most villainous makeup job for reasons. Well, every set here has an older, can't quite place it look to it. Hell, the ending chase scene basically ends up in the Crypt Keeper's lair. <laughs> now, Toby Hooper could have easily phoned this in. You know, give it enough of an interest to have it passable, but no. No, he tries. He adds in the perfect amount of pageantry, and it gives us enough exaggerated atmosphere to make that old horror section at my family video proud. As the story continues and more people die at the hand of the machine, we get some bombastic performances that aim for the sky. What works on page doesn't always work on screen. And Hooper wisely upgraded Officer Hutton into a great, if not hilariously grumpy guy. When he's helping with the exorcism at the end, he exudes an energy I find very relatable. <laughs> like him tossing shit at the beast. And here's the thing, I'd watch a movie on this character alone. Just solving cases, yelling at everybody for no reason, chugging in acids, and just giving up constantly. Get that thing out of my sight! Hooper brings back his Eaten Alive co-star, Mr. Robert England. Bill Gartley is a wild ride, and it's clearly a character England is having a blast with. It's over the top, it is hammy, it's a Bond-level villain. When the mangler tries to eat his loyal yet foolish foreman, <laughs> he does a dance. Everything about Gartley rocks. And this is a character that didn't really exist in King's story. I mean, we hear the name mentioned, but that's it. This cane holding leg brace maniac is solely just a cinematic creation. And pairing him with Hunton is movie magic. All your powerful friends and all your money don't mean shit to me, Gartley. Power is what holds things together. I blame the boom of the bro dude review style for a lot of the problems in the world today. Listen, I'm not saying there aren't actually terrible movies that should be made fun of, but there is a sweet spot where things can be outlandish yet fun. The Mangler is a bizarre and surreal tale that's somehow tethered to a somewhat real world, and at its most goofy, it's impressively sincere. Toby Hooper never got the respect he deserves, and that's a different argument for a different video. But he added in an insane amount of creativity to a story that, in its book form, is pretty cut and dry. And he leaned the perfect amount into the satirical nature of old money, blue collar work, and the lack of upward mobility. For a story that gets boiled down into haunted laundry machine, there's still uh, some well thought out ideas. They're just executed in a weird way. Like the rich sacrificing loved ones for wealth. In the end, The Mangler is a great double feature alongside the other underrated sweaty factory flick, Graveyard Shift. There is fun to be had.